I chose this title because not only do I attempt to capture reflections and moments through the lens of my camera, but these images also create a voice within me, which helps me to also share these photographic images through my written words. Why photography? My love of photography began at the age of 10 with my first brownie box camera. I later painted in oils for several years, but eventually returned to my first love photography, although I do enjoy painting in oils and sometimes acrylics. From 1990 to 2010, I was the event photographer and photographic archivist for the Boston College Presidential Scholars Program, a program for which my husband, Dennis, was the founding director. Part of the four-year program involved our traveling to France for over a month, which resulted in my having the opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, to travel to other European countries as well. During this time at BC, I took several photography courses back when it was all film photography. I will always remember that one year of the many we traveled when I was carrying three cameras plus my video cam. One was a black and white film camera, one a color film camera, and my first digital camera. However, before the trip was over, I had begun to rely solely on my digital camera. Having experienced problems when going through airport security, when the x-rays caused my 36 to 40 rolls of film to become compromised, it became all digital from then on. Through my photos of land, sea, and cityscapes of wildlife and street scenes, I seek to capture moments in time that also evoke a sense of timelessness. As in this scene of medieval houses along a canal in Bruges, Belgium. My artistic impressionistic approach to photography hopefully invites the viewer to enter into a world that rouses, renews, and rewards their interests, their inner selves. My presentation not only includes our European travel experiences and adventures, but also our ventures wherever and whenever we have traveled, whether a day, a week, or a weeks long journeys right here in the States. As I begin, I would like to introduce you to a few of my feathered friends. <clears throat> this photo of the Northern Bluebirds on my porch, um, my lattice porch, which I call a circle of friends, wreath bound. There are certain times of the year when giving and sharing seems to flow freely. And as I encountered this moment captured with my camera, this circle of feathered friends appeared to be doing exactly what we are all encouraged to do, most especially during these difficult times. To give as generously as possible, to share whatever we have, be it a simple smile or a donation or helping a neighbor or stranger all the while reminding ourselves to pray for others when we are unable to be totally present. For in essence, we are all wreath bound by the unending circle of God's enduring love. I try to remember each day to give and to share that love to whomever may fly into my life. For in the end, we are all, <coughs> sorry, called to be tourists doing our best to absorb all that we see and encounter on our travels, no matter where we are. Whether close to home, soaking up the familiar, or discovering a spot we hadn't noticed before. Being a tourist means being willing and open to exploring and experiencing the world around us. As a result of my early experience with black and white film, I came to love the process of creating a finished photograph from a developed negative in the darkroom. Skills I now apply to my digital photography, using mostly traditional darkroom techniques in what I call my digital darkroom. Sometimes people will ask me, did you use Photoshop? And I say, yes, I do. 
as most photographers do, whether it's to make color adjustments or cropping or removing or erasing a blotch or smudge, the usual steps that would be used in the film darkroom. You can also remove distracting objects like telephone poles or wires or an unexpected human <laughs> photo bomb. We were in the medieval city of Bruges in Belgium when my attention was caught by this beautiful scene of a bridge spanning over the canal. It's underside lit by the sun and the buildings reflected in the water. But as I looked closer, I noticed the pollen and flower petals in the water. And immediately I thought of Van Gogh's Starry Night. So I focused on the streams of pollen, the petals and the reflections of the buildings and made this photo. And no, I did not add pollen or flower petals. Later, as I was processing the photo back home in my digital darkroom, I realized that if I flipped it over, it became a kind of magical landscape. And that's how I have printed it ever since. There are many ways to use Photoshop to transform a photo by inserting objects or adding effects to create a whole new photo. And I will show you a couple of examples later. But most of my photos are exactly what I see through my lens. My early experience in oils is often reflected in my images, which are sometimes mistaken for paintings, which reminds me of a funny story. Several years ago, some of my photographs were hanging in Jane Frame's shop when a gentleman came in and bought this framed one a floral window box, which I had photographed while visiting in the little town of Kaisersburg, along the wine route in the Vosges Mountains of Alsace, France. He said to Jane, I like her photos, but I prefer her paintings. To which Jane answered, they're all photos. As the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. I would like to share with you some examples of my work. <clears throat> having, seen, having been fortunate to travel abroad for many years, I was able to experience so many aspects of art in the world, not just in museums, but all around me, whether walking down a street or exploring sites. While I do appreciate photographic technology and do apply some of this knowledge, I mostly create my work from within myself using the lens of my eye. A long time ago, I learned the phrase to make a picture, not take a picture. There is a difference from taking a snapshot and making and capturing a photographic moment. Snapshots are great, and I've taken more than a few myself, but stopping, pausing, and seizing the transient scenes before me is what helps me make those photos. Regardless of whether it's a nature moment, as here we are in Stony Brook. <clears throat> I'm sorry, lost my place here. A city street scheme, driving through a car wash, yes, a car wash, or capturing an architectural piece of art, rooftops or buildings soaring into the sky, whether a local neighborhood or those in another country. Because we were so fortunate to spend a month or more each year in France and Paris, during our travel abroad with students, I came to appreciate what being in another country and culture really means. We weren't hopping from one city or country to another, but learned to take the time to soak up the environment around us. Let us begin with Paris, my home away from home and Notre Dame Cathedral. Here is the photo of the Cathedral of Notre Dame taken from the left bank of the Seine, just before you cross the bridge to the main place before it. This cathedral has stood there here for nearly a thousand years. Upon entering the cathedral, I am always captivated by its inner architectural beauty. Although there may be thousands of people visiting, I am always struck by how quiet and peaceful it is.
While visiting Notre Dame Cathedral a few years ago, I encountered this scene in one of the many alcoves along the side aisle that has stayed in my mind and heart to this very day. Seeing this beautiful moment captured my heart. Discovering these two couples lighting candles while remembering those in need, those they promised to pray for, just as we've done for those we love, those for whom we have promised to light those candles of hope and love, to bring comfort and to bless the future with hope. One of the many aspects of visiting Notre Dame Cathedral, which I enjoyed, being able to climb the 30, 387 steps to the top of the towers, which offered me the opportunity to view the amazing city of Paris from on high. Ascending those stairs was, was and is a definite challenge. And after climbing to the top a second time, I told my husband that if I ever suggest we climb them again, he could whack me on my head <laughs> to remind me we're not doing this again. Can you see those? I'm going to just show you this next picture here. And can you see those uh, tiny dots up there between the towers? They are not dots. Those are people. But the views were definitely worth the climb. <clears throat> Being able to photograph the back of the nave of the cathedral while looking down at the green statues of the apostles and the flying arching buttresses was a gift. And you can see them now. I can't point them to you, but I'm sure you can spot them. And it's very much was a gift given that since the fire in 2019, this is a view that no longer exists. One of the aspects I love when photographing from on high is the incredible views I experience being tight challenged, I'm sure you can appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, um, standing by the gargoyles and looking out over the city, the, Saint, the Seine River flowing along and the Eiffel Tower in the distance with the more modern part of Paris along the horizon. Often inanimate objects can bring to life the most ordinary experiences simply by causing us to not just look at this gargoyle, for example, but to imagine being that gargoyle, sitting atop one of the towers of Notre Dame Cathedral, sitting and leaning forward, our cheeks resting in our hands, our eyes taking in the aerial view of Paris, seeing so many people bustling about the Latin Quarter or beyond. This stone carved gargoyle, weather beaten with chips and dings, and wings and horns that adorn his head, seeming to pensively be reflecting in all that is before, beneath, and around. A lesson I definitely need to practice more each day. To stop, relax, and rest my cheeks on the palms of my hands, and to reflect on what is before me, and to appreciate these moments of pensive reflections. To appreciate how God brings to life all that surrounds me. Here is another view of Notre Dame and Paris. This one from the colonnade of the Pantheon, which we also climbed several times. That colorful collection of blue and red pipes just behind the Notre Dame towers is the Pompidou Center, the home of the modern museum of art. Another of my favorite places to visit in Paris, of course, is the Eiffel Tower, which we have been fortunate to visit numerous times, whether during the day or at night. And of course, we have gone to the top several times. Thousands of people have visited the Eiffel Tower, so it's at the top of the must-see tour list. And I always try to photograph it from different angles and different places. And so whether I'm looking from the top or the bottom, this tower is architecturally and artistically captivating and beautiful. I love photographing what I call street moments, 
while attempting to capture the unexpected and appreciating how unique individuals are, whether in a group or alone. Intimate moments in a crowd are all around us. While in Italy, visiting the Pantheon in Rome, the crowd surrounded us and yes, I began to take and make some photographic moments. When I spotted these folks sitting along this rising uh, wall here and the couples just sharing moments of having lunch, this couple right in front of us with a gentleman with a beret and striped shirt, they're, having, they're actually having lunch. And from another angle, I took a picture and you can see what they're eating. And what I really enjoyed seeing was this gentleman just stretched out and relaxing. Back in Paris, when walking about the Place near the Pompidou Center, the Stravinsky fountain sculptures always caught my attention as they did this young boy. Now, if we were all standing there with him and we could turn around and look behind us, we would see lots and lots of people. But this little fellow was drawn into the creativity of these fountain characters. While exploring the area around Montmartre in Paris, I encountered these women and gentlemen relaxing on a bench near Abbesse in the midst of one of the many flea markets that flourish in this city of light. The mauve colored hair of the woman on the left side caught my attention. She was engaged in a lively conversation with the woman in the red sweater, while the woman between them seemed to be in another place entirely. There are frequent demonstrations in Paris for many reasons. One day we encountered this demonstration or as the French call manifestation, which was a protest against the genocide in Sri Lanka. Tens of thousands of people expressing a cry for justice. And if you look closely to the left, you'll see Dennis there. I was standing up on the top of the stairs here. In the crowd, I saw this gentleman honoring a life possibly taken, could be a brother, a relative, a cousin, a friend. He's helping to put a human face on all those whose lives were lost. We're gonna move over to a very peaceful place. Luxembourg Gardens is another of my favorite places to spend time. Walking about, viewing exhibits, enjoying watching kids sailing, little boats and the duck pond or just stretching out and relaxing by the Medici fountain. And this is where I was sitting. And if you see those people sitting on the side, some are having lunch, or reading a book. A lot of them were napping. <laughs> I've done that myself. The concept of architecture as a form of art has always intrigued me and is something I really appreciate and try to capture with my camera's lens. There is something majestic about a building standing silhouetted against the sky, like this view of the Duomo in Florence, Italy. And all of the little intricacies of the architecture is just amazing. And the harbor towers in Boston, framing the custom house tower seen from a boat in Boston Harbor. When I am photographing, one of the things that I enjoy doing is looking for reflective images because they offer me the opportunity to see the familiar in an unfamiliar way. One example is this photo taken while I was in downtown Boston walking along the Greenway. There before me stood a beautiful all glass high rise and mirrored in its window was another building across the way. Its reflection filled my eyes as it seemed to be engulfed by the late afternoon's intensely blue sky. The reflected building in itself was just an ordinary structure that I might have looked at once and moved on. But seen against the mirror-like canvas, what was once simple and ordinary was transformed into a wave-like sculptural puzzle 
just waiting to be put together. One time when in New York City, a few years ago, I was standing on the balcony of the a hotel, looking all around me. The end of my right side was this high rise building reflecting multiple high rises and traffic below in its mirror like facade. When I zoomed in and focused on the buildings reflected on his side, it gave me a whole new photograph, which I call wavy reflections. I do appreciate the architectural beauty of buildings, whether day or nighttime, as in this photo of high rise buildings and the traffic looking like a golden river flowing through midtown Manhattan. Another unusual perspective, which is a favorite of my husband's, is this photo taken in the middle of Fifth Avenue traffic with rain droplets on the window of a bus. The colorful brake light splashes and umbrellas create an impressionistic feel. During our many travels, whether driving or taking a train from town to town, I always try to seize the moments before me, whether here at home or in France, Austria, Italy, or Belgium. This is the Belfort Tower in the town of Bruges in Belgium. An art historian friend of ours recommended we climb the bell tower to experience the views of the city, which we did. And yes, lots and lots and lots of stairs to climb. 366 to be exact. What we hadn't bargained for was being up close and personal when those bells began to toll. It was deafening. Looking down, I appreciated seeing these beautifully stepped roof fronts in the marketplace below, which is very typical of Belgian and Dutch architecture. It's just mesmerizing to me. And it's also where we would dine frequently. And here on the other side below us, we saw the medieval town of Bruges spreading out with the Cathedral of St. Salvador and the orange and red roofed houses presenting so much beauty to embrace. Sometimes getting a great photo means being in the right place at just the right time. When visiting the city of Amsterdam in the Netherlands, we were blessed to visit the house of Anne Frank. And upon coming out onto the street along the canal after a heavy rainfall, looking up there before our eyes was this double rainbow showing a promise of a beautiful day. And I love the fact what caught my attention first was these two people in the boat looking up and that caused me to look up. While driving through the south of France years back, I spotted this colorful field of sunflowers and enchanted by their beauty, we pulled to the side of the road to make a few photos, hoping to capture more on our way back, which unfortunately we didn't get to do. Spending time in Italy has been such a gorgeous gift, not just for my eyes, but for my heart and soul. A dear friend advised me that if we ever got to travel to Italy, we had to visit Assisi in the Umbrian Hills. And we did twice, staying at a local convent just across from the Basilica of St. Francis. Definitely a place I would return to again and again. I took this photo from the window of our room, the beautiful Umbrian sunset glowing before my eyes. Walking about in Assisi is beautiful, but not easy. It's uphill in both directions, full of narrow passageways, but definitely worth exploring while climbing steps and turning corners and climbing more stairs. And people always have their potted plants and flowers. It's just beautiful to see. 
Those Roman arches are so graceful and invited me to seize those moments. Hmm, wonder what's around that corner. When we traveled to Austria, I was overcome by the beauty of the Alps. We took the cog rail to the top of Mount Schaffberg in the Salzkirmagat region. And while sitting atop this beautiful mountain, I actually sang, the hills are alive. And yes, Dennis took this photo. Turning around, I saw this dramatic view of row after row of mountains stretching into the far distance before me. And people, uh, I guess they're called um, hang gliders. I'd be sitting there or standing there and there'd be this whoosh by my shoulder and somebody would be jumping off the mountain, which I would never do. <laughs> Mountains have always captured my attention. While hiking in the White Mountains in North Conway, New Hampshire, I came across this beautiful, peaceful vista. We did a lot of hiking then. Now I have a passion for the ocean, whether low, mid or high tide, because those scenes change constantly as the waves roll in and out. And for that reason, the number of ocean view photographs that I have created is most likely in the thousands. For when waiting to make just the right photograph, I will sit or stand or walk for hours, capturing moment after moment, while those crashing waves roll onto the shore along the beach, as in this photo of a sailboat just beyond the breakers. Walking along the marginal way in Agunquit, Maine is another favorite place where I enjoy every second. Oops, sorry about that. We'll be back there in a minute. Okay. You there? <laughs> anyway, it's, I, it's beautiful watching this, savoring the salt water misty air while watching the waves crashing on the rocks below. And just the birds flying around, it's just it's really kind of cool. I've learned that patience is essential. For example, to make this photograph of Nubba Lighthouse in York, Maine, I spent a long time and took over a hundred photographs, attempting to catch the crashing surf at just the right moment. Here is one of many examples. And after a long day of exploring and photographing, being able to enjoy supper outside while appreciating the setting sun over Perkins Cove is always a great way to end the day. A few years back in the fall, while traveling in upstate New York through Cooperstown, Scanny Atlas, Auburn, the Finger Lakes region, down to Ithaca Falls, the towns and countryside completely captured me with its charm and autumn beauty. Our objective was to see as much of the area as possible while hiking along trails to view waterfalls or gliding along in a boat, as in this photo taken while cruising on Lake Otsego in Cooperstown. And yes, we went to the Hall of Fame too. Stopping to photograph a bridge, we found ourselves parking by an old mill, the Seneca Knitting Mills now long abandoned, its walls crumbling, but its facade still standing. And as we walked about, the remains of an old mill window caught my eye as a blazing red leaf vine created an unexpected decorative frame. I like to think of it as a reclamation project created by nature. As we continued our exploration of the Finger Lakes region, we came to Ithaca Falls, one of our goals, standing at the bottom, watching as the water cascaded down, once again, I was blessed to capture a moment after moment. This is a moment where I was so focused golden reflection, on the golden reflections that I hadn't realized that this handsome blue heron had been quietly standing at the base of the falls. 
I zoomed in to make this photo and patiently watched him until he took flight. It was only when processing my photos that I realized that I had caught more than just a blue heron in flight, but his shadow as well. I entitled this, Me and My Shadow. Well, I'd love to share, would love to share more of, of uh, my approach to photo photographing birds in flight or those visiting my feeder or sitting in our cedar tree. I will save it for another time. Instead, as I promised earlier in my talk, I will share a few examples, or actually a couple, of how I have used Photoshop more creatively, creatively to transform photos. I took this photo of these hand-blown glass wine jugs in the courtyard of a tea shop while visiting the ancient town of Vézelay in the Burgundy region, region of France. I stepped inside the courtyard to experiment, <clears throat> I'm sorry, courtyard photographing before hurrying to catch up with our friends. I decided to experiment in Photoshop, applying a combination of filters and other digital tools and transformed it into this mosaic-like photograph. Another example of a digital experiment is this photo of a Cooper's hawk who had perched on my, a fence post in my yard, which after a few similar transformations became this mosaic gem. Sometimes you can find fascinating photos in the most unlikely places. Remember I mentioned a car wash? Well, for example, one day I was going through the car wash and I took several photos just as an experiment. This one has a mysterious quality about it. Well, this one totally stunned me. I did not manipulate this photo, folks, in any way. This is exactly what my camera saw. And I call this a Technicolor car wash. My cameras are not just point and shoot tools, but are my tech brushes helping me to capture and grasp life's unexpected moments, or to create a moment reflecting how life seems to be but a blur or a swirl, sweeping us up for the ride. I would like to leave you with a photo of the setting sun across the street from my home. It's been said that tomorrow is promised to no one. But when I see sweeping, swirling clouds against a brilliantly blue sky, just as the sun begins to slip below the horizon, for me, tomorrow becomes a beautiful possibility. And when I look up with my eyes focused on the ever-changing beauty before me, my hope is for a tomorrow when I will hopefully be able to continue on my journey, my ongoing pilgrimage through life with all its bumps, curves and highs, along with the unexpected dips, all the while attempting to share with those I encounter whatever joy and comfort I can offer. I hope that my daily photographic pilgrimages will create ripples and then waves, and then perhaps impact those along the pathway of my daily travels. And more often than not, a simple smile when passing a stranger can often make all the difference in that person's life, creating the promise of a brighter tomorrow, which is what I hope my photography encourages. Finally, what does being an artist really mean to me? Whether using a camera or paintbrushes, a palette knife, wood carving, pottery and more, whatever you or I create is hopefully coming from our hearts and souls and not just what pleases someone else. I, we should all be the judge of our own works. Thank you for listening.